As we continue this Wednesday morning, talking about the science of what we eat. Ever wondered about how the flavors of some of these wonderful foods have changed over the years? Well, you can find out the science behind it at an event coming up Sunday at Revolution Hall. We have Rebecca Riley, an OMSI science educator with us, and Jim, tell me your last name, Brunberg. Brunberg. Yes, uh, and you are with uh, Rome School, and you're a facilitator at the event. We were fascinated, first of all, Rebecca, you brought the point home about how much food has changed. Tell us about the evolution of the peach. Yeah, so peaches are originally from China, and they've been bred for about 6,000 years. Before that, they looked more like a cherry. They were really waxy skin and kind of tasted like lentils, actually. And that small? They were about this small, yeah. A so peach. A peach. Why has the peach grown to the size it is? Why is the whole texture different now? So you can kind of think about this. Imagine you're a farmer. You have two of these different cobs of corn in your field. Which one would you choose to save seeds from for next year? I better let Drew take a closer I'd look. Go, I'd go here. I'm go on the good looking strong and healthy. corn, right? Big, strong, and healthy. Anything besides how it looks, how else would you choose? Uh, big, strong, and healthy. No, I, I, and I, I taste. 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 Yes, taste. Taste. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So over 6,000 years, every single season, these farmers are choosing the ones that are bigger, juicier, and taste better. So year after year after year, little by little, we get to go from here to here. I feel like our viewers are familiar with OMSI. They should be by now, mm -hmm. uh, except we have another segment to do if they don't. <laughs> what is OMSI? <laughs> but maybe not as familiar with Rome School. So, Jim, maybe you can give us a little background on Rome School and, and how you're involved with this event along with OMSI. Oh, sure thing. Well, it started as uh, me and my daughters. I have two twin daughters. And we make a radio show and a podcast called Rome School. And we go around, and the daughters ask the initial question, and it's a, from a child's point of view. Right. We're all big OMSI fans. Uh, and what we find is that we go to ask people these questions in person, and we end up going into a really in-depth study of the thing that's not for kids at all. It's for grown-ups. So the, the radio show is something you'd listen to as a grown-up, not with your kids. Actually, there's even dirty words in there sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> a podcast, and we're not governed by FCC. Right. Like, like you guys. Anything yeah. goes. Anything goes. And this event on Sunday is geared toward adults, you were telling me. What yeah. beyond what we're seeing here and what Rebecca is telling us is going to be going on? Oh, so much. We're going to have, uh, for the kids, if people do bring their families, it is still appropriate. Uh, we'll have some baby sheep in the hallway, and they will be presented by some local farmers. And we're going to have a meat thinker named Camus Davis, who's written extensively about how she used to be a vegetarian, but she became, reluctantly, became a meat eater and a leading meat thinker uh, in terms of sourcing meat and raising animals, not in the factory farm setting, but in a humane setting, sure. uh, and how, how come things taste better in that realm. So like Rebecca is with this, uh, Camus will do some talking about why meat tastes different. Yeah, and I want to get back to more of this, because fascinating that it can help us actually shop for our produce, Rebecca, you were saying. So you brought some heirloom tomatoes and some regular tomatoes. Tell me what's going on there. Yeah, so as I mentioned, over thousands and thousands of years, we were choosing things based on flavor and size. Um, but in the last 50 years, since World War II or so, we are choosing tomatoes and carrots and our produce based on how far we can ship it around the world. Okay. And that usually comes at the expense of flavor. So wow. these guys, they all usually look the same. Mm -hmm. They probably came from Mexico. They box, they box well. Mm, they box well. <laughs> They're probably, a ton of them will grow on a plant, so you get a much higher yield. Um, but traditional produce that's older than World War II, those seed strains have been around longer. They usually look funnier. They're a lot more different colors. They're smaller. Wow, but they purple taste carrot, better. Right? Mm -hmm. So they usually you taste, taste a lot better. Uh, <laughs> no, thank you. It that matches is, your shirt. You're, you're so kind. Oh, come on. Mm. How's it? Much more I honestly flavor. wouldn't even. I didn't even think to break it in half. I just saw that. I just saw that little thing on the end. And thought, I don't want to eat that. <laughs> That's the way I was going to feed it to you. <laughs> no, that. So this has more robust flavor. Mm -hmm. um, it was it's usually an heirloom variety. Heirlooms are usually selected for flavor over durability. So when you are shopping, if you do see the ones that are funny colors or shapes, um, you should choose those because they'll probably taste better. And they're probably a lot more local too because they can't travel very far. They're most likely from within Oregon, so you'll right. be supporting Excuse me, Jim, help me up with the test here before yeah. we run out of it. I didn't mean to us. cut you off there. Oh, I want you to, you close your eyes. Yeah, I'm going to tell you which He's going to tell me whether that's the, what do I call this tomato, the Mexico tomato? Yeah, I guess so. The Mexico tomato. Can we come up with a better, let's, let's, let's not do that to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> the travels well tomato. Yes. Okay. The more traditional the found tomato. in the grocery store tomato. Is okay. that too okay. long of a title? Are you really going to close your eyes and do a blind test? Yes, he's doing a blind test. Oh, he's doing a blind test. Yes. So, all right. Smack me in the face right now. You know, know, know which it is. Yeah. You know which it is. Okay, ready? Uh -huh. <laughs> Go ahead, bite down. Not my finger. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in my mouth. Put it in my mouth, woman. 
That was, mm -hmm. a big, that was a big chunk. I already know what that is. That's the um, traditionally found in the store bought tomato, am I right? Well, try the other okay. one so you can compare. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't play well. Oh, wait a minute. No, nope. I'm sticking to it. The first one was uh, the traditional round one that travels well. You're wrong. He needs to go to the seminar on Sunday, doesn't he? We should have had the bowls <laughs> reversed here, I think. That's yes. a great uh, test, uh, proven well on television. I'd like a taste of the heirloom there, just to see. <laughs> it, is, it is early in the season for produce, especially with our winter that we've been having, so it was a little bit difficult to find um, some heirloom. Yeah, and one fruit. final point you were saying, it, it, when you talk about uh, the farmers and their role in this, so they're choosing the seeds, which mm -hmm. go into the ground each year, yeah. and that's sort of what's causing everything to evolve. Yeah, so heirlooms are things you pass on generation to generation. That's why heirloom seeds and heirloom fruits, they're ones that have been passed down from farmer to farmer. The That's a great again, tomato. Event <laughs> detail, I like them both. Uh, the event details again one more time so people can check this event out right there on your screen. Food Smarts. There it is, May 21st. I believe that is Sunday. Yes, it is, mm -hmm. 3.30 Southeast Stark Street. There you'll find it. Revolution Hall again, the location. Tracy, Ashley, back over to you on the couch.